guys, Jason here. Had Jamie Englehart in my backyard a couple days ago. We uh, we went right to lunch after we recorded, so I didn't get to do an introduction till now. I had a great time with him. Uh, love that guy. Thankful for him in my life. On my back deck, we uh, we connected around the goodness of God, the grace of apostolic ministry, the importance of connection and community. Uh, we talked about objective and subjective truth. Uh, Jamie uh, had this phrase, it can be true of me, but not true to me. Uh, really, that's what we unpack throughout uh, the entire conversation. Uh, the role uh, or the works of grace, encountering God's love and affection. Of course, everything is relational. Um, moving from church mentality to kingdom thinking. Uh, experiencing the truth of God's goodness. A lot of what we talked about was experiencing the love of God. What is true of me becoming true to me. Something objective becoming both objective and subjective. The invitation into union, clearing our lens. We talked about the nature of hell and darkness, uh, the relational dynamic of God being light and working out our salvation while living in the ease of his life in the ease of our union, a partnership between faith and action. Uh, we dive into a whole lot of beautiful things with Jamie, and it was fun to do it uh, face to face. Uh, it's uh, a whole lot more relational. I can actually reach out, tap him on the shoulder. Uh, thankful again to have that opportunity. And we had a surprise guest at the end, a, a friend of Jamie's and a new friend of mine, uh, Reggie Beasley, a local guy, not originally, but he's in the area now. Ended up connecting with him at, at lunch as well. He pops in at the end of the conversation. Loved this conversation with Jamie. Love him. I'm thankful for him. Guys, uh, sign up to our mailing list. To keep up with us. Uh, it's at afamilystory.org, afamilystory.org. Uh, you can also give there. We're listener supported. Very grateful when you partner with us that way. You can also find us uh, on Facebook. We have a uh, thriving and growing uh, Rethinking God with Tacos Facebook group. You can also follow us on Instagram. Lots of reels and uh, memes there. Uh, appreciate you guys. Uh, love doing this. Uh, love the opportunities that have come from it, the connections, the friendships, the relationships, and all the life that we're experiencing together. So uh, praying grace and joy over you today. Uh, enjoy this conversation I had with my friend Jamie Englehart. Jamie Englehart, you're here, man, in my backyard. It, beautiful <laughs> nature. Look at this. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I'm looking at the screen. Yeah. <laughs> but it's here, man. We're you're in my backyard, and uh, tell me this. What have you been up to? Oh my lord. Uh, of course, constant traveling. Yeah, I mean that's yeah that's part of my life which I enjoy and I, I'll never stop. Yeah. I mean, my my wife years ago said, you know, if someone gave the ministry, yeah, you know, three million, five million dollars tomorrow, how would it change your traveling? Yeah, and she said, I know that you'd give and then you'd you'd invest. Right. And I'm like, I thought about it a minute. And I started smiling. She said, you'd probably travel just as much, wouldn't you? <laughs> I was like, it'd be so much more fun. Yeah, I wouldn't need any money. I'd be like Ed McMahon <laughs> everywhere I went, receive offerings, give it back to the to the churches and the pastors. I mean, yeah. So I mean, because I love I love doing what I do, and, and and of course, part of the the grace of my life is apostolic, yeah. and it means sent. Yeah, you can't stay. Right. I mean, you know, anyone who just stays all the time. I mean, you know, there's yeah. there's an aspect of that, and so, and uh, I love um, love uh, equipping leaders and helping leaders, and it's what I what I truly enjoy, bro. I I am um, this guy. I, I, what have we known each other? A couple of years. Yeah. So, but I feel like I've known you a lot longer. Sure, absolutely. And and, and really, that's you. Yeah. That's a, like you 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 call man. You you uh, and when we talk, like when you're when the phone rings, I'm like, do I have an hour? <laughs> <laughs> and in my mind, and, and and by the way, I, I hope I do. When you call, I'm like. I'm, I'm, uh, and I'm going to take it any way I can, uh, even if it's half an hour. But I'm, what I'm saying is, I, I'm like, man, I, I don't know if there's... Uh, I say this about one other guy, Dub. I'm like, there's more hours in Dub's day than there is in anybody else. Right, right. I feel that way about you. <laughs> when you call, you do encourage. Uh, and, you know, um, you've given uh, you've given advice. You've given insight into even the season that we're in. Sure. Me as myself. Yeah. 
So I'm grateful for you, man. Sure. Well, and, and all the rethinking God with tacos, right. Facebook people. Yeah. I mean, uh, that, that was him and I having lunch and I said, you need to start a Facebook yeah. page. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> That's, right. That, That's right. That's exactly right. Um, and for the purpose of community, for the purpose of connecting, absolutely, for the purpose of relationship, it's been good. Man. Well, and it's been, already been beautiful. Yeah. People finding one another in different parts of the my country. I, yeah, I mean, I've got a few guys connected to me that are yeah. preaching what we're preaching. Yeah, and there were people in their area who said, "Is anybody in our area?" And I'm like, "Yeah," and I'm, you know, send them there, and they're yeah. loving it. Yeah. And I mean, it's, it's, it's that's, that's my that's my one of my favorite stories. Absolutely. And when I see when I see someone from one town and another town having tacos, uh, and they take a picture and put and, and they, I'm like. That's it. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, share a little bit for those. Most folks know who you are, but, um, you know, the, the accident that caused this beautiful voice. <laughs> Just kidding. Overuse. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit about who you are. You're traveling, right you're apostolic, but where are you out of? Uh, just a little yeah. bit of that. I live in uh, the Louisville, Kentucky area yeah. uh, right now, but was from Michigan for years. Moved to Louisville because our, our daughter moved there and took our granddaughter and so we we followed and then actually we were able to buy the house next door so our now they had another child so our two little granddaughters are 60 feet from us and it's heaven on earth we wouldn't have it any other way yeah uh then um i have traveled now uh, my wife and i just celebrated uh, uh we're going on our 34th year of marriage yeah traveled 34 years family traveled with me uh my wife first 21 years my kids first 17 16 years of their life and both my kids are crazy gifted musically my son's a producer they play all kinds of instruments right write music and and grace for all that and i'd love i'd love to take credit but right. uh, i taught them the drums when they were five <laughs> so you got rhythm. I'm, I'm a drummer you got rhythm. and uh, but right. then their mom's got a degree in sacred music they get they get all their talent from uh, <laughs> they get their noise from me <laughs> they get their they get their boisterousness uh -huh. and uh, and maybe their boldness for me but they get all the talent from mom i, I definitely married up in, in that department for sure and then uh 20 years ago now it's actually 20 years ago uh coming up here this july yeah uh, I began to lead a network of churches. I was I was thirty seven. Yeah, you know, I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah, and then uh, that's been going now for twenty years. We got yeah. you know churches all around the country and and leaders that we love and pour into, and uh, that's what I love to do. We've church planted. We've done a little bit of everything. Yeah, uh, you know, ministry wise. Uh, but I, written a book, a few other things. Yeah, yeah. The, the um. What I love, as I've gotten to know you, know your story, you, you know, you're a relational theologian, <laughs> smart guy. Yeah. You know, I would say probably most rooms, you're the smartest guy in the room. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well read. I, I feel like the older I get, I feel dumber, yeah. but it's all right. <laughs> we were just talking about that. Yeah. But, but, um, but, but even the rethinking journey, cause you've, yeah. you know, you've, you've moved from, you know, substitutionary atonement, you, you know, you've. You've rethought things along the way. Yeah. Um, I mean, I was raised classical Pentecostal. Right. You know, I mean, right. I've had to rethink a little bit of everything, which, of <laughs> yeah. course, was my last time we did a, yeah. a podcast. It was about my book, and my whole book was about my kind of deconstruction and reconstruction. Right. Yeah. It's good, man. This is this is the journey. I am, uh, when 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 we talked about you coming, because we're, we're, we're going to go, you know, they did tacos. Uh, right. Yeah. Last night, you've, right. you've been in the, in the in the area for a while, but we're we're gonna go have lunch after this. But when you were coming uh, last night, I was like, because uh, it was kind of last moment as far as planning this right. a little bit. Yeah. And uh, I was like, well, what are we gonna talk about? And I actually was like, man, normally uh, when we do this, if I feel like I'm connecting with the person, there's the what's burning in your heart question, but it almost always comes last if I can get it out because. That that's a pretty that's one of those questions you ask when you're sitting around a coffee table and you've or right. a dinner and you've yeah. already connected and you're just like yeah and we're like all right but what's burning like if if we're having lunch what's the thing you got to tell me <laughs> and so I'm processing that thinking I'll just ask him when he's preaching because you know that's what's burning right now yeah and uh, you walked in the door and said hey <laughs> hey here's what I'm thinking this is what's burning me this is what this is what I'm this is what I'm... so you're you're um well from the context of union yeah. You're, share a little bit about just what did you share when you walked in the door? Yeah, well, you know the Let's start there. Well, yeah, I, I think especially in a lot of uh, a lot of the grace finished work, union, kingdom, I mean, whatever right <laughs> verbiage you want to use, but it's people uh, inclusion. I mean, it's people that are kind of on this similar journey with the gospel of grace 
you know, grace is predominantly an objective message. It's an objective truth. Yeah. So it, it's telling you who you are in Christ. It's telling you how God sees you, how God views you. And it's, it's absolutely true of you. That's, that is, your, it's who you are to your core. Yeah. It's who you are to your being. Uh, union, none of that, none of that ever changes from God towards us. Yeah. But the issue most of the time isn't just, first of all, we got to know how God sees us, but then also then how we then reflect that mirror. We beholdings in a mirror right. are changed into that image. So I've got to then see myself the way that God sees me. And that comes with the knowing. I think it was a couple of weeks ago, I was at a church and I, uh, I made that statement. It, uh, you know, a lot of people love to use that that First John three verse that you know you've got an anointing from the Holy One that no man can teach you. And I mean, I literally know like charismatics yeah. who don't believe you need any other human, right. uh, any other books. Right. Like all you need is the Bible and the right. Holy Ghost and a download from heaven to figure all this stuff out. It's scary, and man. I, well, and, and what blows me away is I'm like, but wait a minute, you don't need another man. But John was a man who wrote it, who was actually, so a man told you you didn't need a man. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean it, which it doesn't really make any sense whatsoever. <laughs> but but I, I think more what John was talking about is, of course, we need full ministry. Of course, we need other gifts and individuals and people to, to impart into our lives. But it's the Holy Spirit on the inside of us that makes it revelation, yeah. that makes it true to me. You know, it can be true of me, right. but not true to me. Yeah. And so a lot of what I get asked by people as I'm traveling, they're like, man, we love this church. We love this teaching, you know, whether it's an online community. And they're like, man, this has been changed in our lives. But, you know, we're, we're reading, we've been blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly Christ. But I, how come I don't feel that way? You know, or how come my reality yeah. of what I'm actually experiencing doesn't look like what I'm being told? Yeah. And, and I think it, it causes sometimes people to be a little disillusioned with that. Yeah. And and, and I tell you, uh, the, the thing that about a year ago the Holy Spirit hit me with was was uh, First Timothy 2 or Second Timothy 2. One of them, I always get those first and seconds messed up all the time. But uh, where he said that uh, it is God's desire that all men be saved. Right. And come to the knowledge of the truth. Of course, that word knowledge, epigenosis in the Greek, it literally means like firsthand experience or firsthand encounter. So uh, Paul, late, or Paul later tells Timothy that men would ever be learning and never coming to the knowledge of the truth, which lets us know that you can literally, yeah, yeah. you know, you can listen to podcast after podcast, yeah, go to yeah, conference after yeah. conference, church service yeah. after church service, and never have an actual encounter yeah. yourself. Yeah. Because it's the things that become true to us that transform us here. Come on, man. You know, what's true of us doesn't change eternity. Yeah. It doesn't change God's view towards us. It's yeah, yeah. it's that whole thing of, uh, I think, you know, where the reformers got it a little bit wrong is when they taught sola gratia, that it's grace alone. Right. Because it's not grace alone. Yeah. You know, now it's grace alone, <laughs> God towards us. It's yeah. grace alone when it comes to uh, eternity's a done deal. I mean, it was grace alone yeah, yeah. that when he died, we all died. When yeah. he was raised, we were all raised. When he was seated, we were all seated. You know, of course, the gospel is an announcement of not you going to heaven, but, you know, announcing you're already there. Yeah. You know, I mean, that, that's the beauty of it. I, right. I've been telling people for years, I said, you don't go to heaven just when you die. You went to heaven when Jesus died. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, that, yeah. that, that changes the whole. It's within us. Come on. It, yeah. it changes the whole scope. Yeah. But yet, you know, then you, but then you read all these verses yeah. that can kind of confuse that a little bit. You know, I mean, you know, I mean, Jesus tells us the kingdom of God is within us and then tells us to seek it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, right. I mean, right. how do how, how do I seek something <laughs> right. that that, yeah. that that's in me? Yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, we're, we're, we're told that we're in perfect union with him, yeah. that we're one with him. Um, he'll never leave us nor forsake us. But, but then we're told seek the Lord why I may be found. Yeah. You know, I mean, we're, we're told draw near to him in, in the new Testament, by the way, Yeah, draw near. Right. Well, I mean, how, how do you draw near to right. someone yeah, yeah. that you're in union with? Yeah. How, how does Jesus grow in wisdom and favor with God? When he's in perfect union when with him. he's in perfect union with him. <laughs> Come on. And, unless it's an awakening to what's already true. Correct. It's a greater revelation of what's already true. When I, the thing that I love and, and, I, and, Years ago, I wrote a book called Prone to Love, and I, and I was having uh, this conversation with a worship pastor. Yeah. And it was, I was having it over and over and over again, but he was leading worship. And then he, we sat down with him, and he said, Jason, it seems like you and Jesus are best friends. Like, it's, <laughs> he's like, I, I, I can that. lead worship. I can, if, if, but he feels dis like, 
how do I get in his lap was essentially what he was asking. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the answer to that question was, uh, well, how does he, how do you think he feels about you? For me, that was where I, I let him, what are, what are God's thoughts about you? Yeah. But my, my thing that was going off of me is, man, how do, how do we help people counter? Because I, I've, got, I've got this, we, we, we were talking about it in the kitchen while I was making coffee, you know, that there's the, there's this, there's two things happening. One is, um, I live in this moment where my experiences are sometimes incongruent with what is true. Correct. Right. And and I know it. Like I know everything he has is mine. But I experience lack. I run up against it on right. a, on a regular basis. But that's a, a thing that you're talking about where there's a faith element. There's the other part that is, and this is the part that I was sharing with him. I'm like, I want my. I, I've said this often. I want my kids uh, to have encounters with with the Come names on. of God. Yeah. Not just have knowledge about the interpretations. Come on. Because encounters with the names of God, an encounter with his affection, and an actual revelation, like, and, and the way I would say it to my kids, it's this simple. I'm saying, listen, if you feel love for your sister, that's the language of God. Yeah. And if you'll become fluent in stewarding that love that you feel for your sister, Come on. now you know how to talk God's language because that's that's how yeah. God speaks to us. So that's the experiential yeah. side. But there's yeah. a faith element that says we're, it's finished, and I'm living in a circumstance that clearly doesn't <laughs> doesn't reverberate. Well, I mean, I mean, if if you know, Peter says that we've been given all things that pertain to life and godliness. Yeah. Now, we, we, I think we can boldly say I've got everything I need godly. Right. But everything for life. Yeah. It's like you know, I mean, my bank account. You know, probably use a few more zeros in. <laughs> and, and I, I mean, if if we're just honest, I mean, there, you know, yeah, yeah. we've got some broken relationships sometimes in yeah. families, and I've been given everything that pertains to life, but yeah. you know, it's true of me. Yeah, yeah. But the key is, is it true to me. I mean, you know, I think one of one of the on, one man. of the one of the myths in my book is, you know, when Jesus uh, Jesus said, you, you know, you should know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Yeah. And the myth is, the truth doesn't make you free. No. It's the truth you know. Which is gnosis, come epigenosis. On, come so, on, yeah. it, 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 it's a real because that truth is a person. Now we're having a conversation about relationship. It it all goes back to that. I think you're a relationship well, theologian. Well, <laughs> <laughs> you just like that because you are. That's okay. <laughs> but but well, I'm, I mean, you know, when 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 it, when it comes to when it comes to knowing, uh, not just in our head. Yeah. But you know, it's like the question I asked. I'm like, how do I draw near? when I'm already one, but yeah. then it hit me, well, I'm one with my wife. Yeah. But if I don't continually draw near to my wife, that that's on the experiential side. Yeah. I mean, I can, I can get married and tell my wife we're one right. and, and never talk to her. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you know, never have any actual relationship, right. no intimacy. And then use the covenants to explain it. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Well, yeah, we can, <laughs> you know, I mean, the truth is, yeah, we can, we can, Sorry. yeah, but we, if we can, seriously, we can come to that place and say, but, but wait a minute, if I don't, yeah, if, if I don't draw near to her, if I don't speak her love language, yeah. if I don't, yeah. uh, th there's still something to do. I mean, I, I think, you know, part of, part of our issue is, you know, in the, a lot of the grace camp, especially, you know, we'll hear like Joseph Prince say, it's not what you do, do, do. It's what he's done, done, done. Yeah. Okay. And, and the problem is then nobody wants to do, do, do anything right. because they came out of such a workspace mindset, but there's more than 15 verses post cross right. about works of grace. Yeah. You know, I mean, Paul said, I labored more than all the other apostles by the grace of God. Yeah. I, I tell people, I said, when I got a revelation of grace, it didn't cause me to do less. Yeah. What changed is the motivation. Yeah. Well, you right. know, I, I mean, so now I'm not working for God. I'm working, I'm working from, with God. Yeah. I'm not working for a blessing. I'm working from a place of being blessed. I'm not working, trying to earn his love. I already know that I'm loved. Yeah. And, and so then I, then I work. And yeah. so I think sometimes in our camps, the word work becomes a four letter cuss word. Yeah. I mean, you know, where people are literally like, you know, I rebuke you in Jesus' name. You're trying to put me back under yeah, works. And yeah. it's like, but wait a minute. We're not saved by works, yeah. but we are saved for good works. But I'll say that. So Wayne Jacobson, if you're familiar with that. Knows, name, yeah. Wayne uh, would say to a pastor as, you know, Wayne was preaching this grace message. He would say to a pastor, hey, if you've got a lot of people that are coming to your church and they're serving uh, don't, and you don't want to mess that up, don't bring me in. <laughs> <laughs> because there is a season, there is a transit. Because I think a lot of I agree. There's an un, there's an unlearning. We can call it deconstruction, yep. whatever. There's an unlearning where you where if you've, I mean, man, it's a detoxing. Well, yeah, for 35 years of my life, I lived to hear 
I lived to hear my father say, this is my son whom I love, with him I'm well pleased. Like I was living for, I was yeah. raised under the call of God and Come leadership on. looked like, and, and so I was living for it. And there was the day, uh, and it was a two year process, but then there was the day where, where I'm, I, I, I won't tell the story here because it'd take too long, but there was a day when I discovered that Jesus got the well pleased before he did any of the stuff. All the ministry stuff, all the stuff that we would say, this is what ministry looks Correct. like. No, no. Correct. For the first 30 years of his life, he was doing ministry, and it was right. only about becoming sure in his father's affection. And then he goes and does this stuff. So there's this, there's well, a but, shifting, a trans... Right. Well, but I think the problem is... But because you when, want to we, do this when, stuff. Right. But you when want we, to, like, right. it's not like <laughs> right. when you say do and there's right. grace, like I want right. to love someone. If, if, right. if I'm love, I become oh, love and I right. win. So sorry. I just, but, but, but I think part of the problem is, and I, I do a whole teaching on the difference between the gospel of the church and the gospel of the kingdom. Yeah. Okay. And, and I think part of our problem is when we hear works, all we're thinking about is bringing donuts to church right? or being, right. or being an usher yeah. or well, the works he prepared before the foundation of the world is what you're put on the planet to do. Yeah. And, and, and it may involve church it's or it may not. Kids. Hello. Yeah. You know, but I mean, it's, it, it, it's, it's, it's walking out this, yeah. this kingdom life. Cause the, the problem a lot of times, most of us have only heard the gospel of the church yeah. and the gospel yeah. of the church is telling you, we, we take time in church to teach you about what to do in church. Yeah. Rather than actually, you know, like, like during the week have budgeting classes, uh, you know, I mean, actually teaching people how to live where they live. Right. Because they're only in that building, maybe, right. maybe three hours a month. I mean, depending if they even show up every week. If it's week. charismatic, it could be a little long. Yeah, right, right. right. Exactly. <laughs> and, but, but I mean, all of that, I think we've put such a focus. I know, I know, I know when I, when I had started a church back in Michigan, it took me almost three years. And I would say this regularly. I'd get up and say, because we would always have, because we only did Sunday nights. And and preachers in the region would find out when I was preaching, because I only preached twice a month. Right. And they would come. I mean, they wanted to be fed. They right. wanted to be encouraged. Right. And, I, and I spoke to them, too. Right. And so, but what we would have happen is I would get up almost every time I'd preach and say, uh, how many full-time ministers are in the house? Come on, man. And everybody would look around. Come on. Waiting for a preacher. Come on. And I'd be like, you know everybody's called a full-time kingdom ministry. Yeah. If you work at Walmart, you're called to be a full-time kingdom minister. If you, yeah. I mean, no matter what you do for money, yeah. you know, now there are people called a full-time church ministry, Sure. but, but we're all called a full-time kingdom ministry. But you know, like I remember gr growing up, right, I grew up going to Pentecostal church camp. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Which when I was in college, I traveled in a band and we did 15 camps one summer. And I realized all these camps are the same. Yeah. Monday and Tuesdays come back to Jesus because you've been a little heathen all year. We got to get you resaved. Right. What Wednesday night's Holy Ghost night? Or did they hang you over hell? In, yeah. In the oh, oh, absolutely. Yeah. And so Wednesday night was Holy Ghost night. We either had to get you full of the Holy Ghost or you were leaking, and so you got to get refilled. Right. All right. And then the last night was always commissioning night. Somewhere the preacher would say, "Who shall go for us?" and "Who shall we send?" Here am I, and they'd say, "How many feel called a full time minister?" Right. All right. Well, my best friend, uh, he wanted to be. A doctor. He had no desire to, because our idea of full-time ministry was preaching, teaching, and singing. Yeah. So if you couldn't preach, teach, or sing, you're pretty much screwed. Right. You know, what are you going to do? Maybe usher or deke? I mean, you know, I mean, what else is there for you yeah. in the kingdom? Yeah. Yeah. And so he would sit in the back, oh, you know, yeah. I mean. I know, that, I know that story well. Yeah. <laughs> the rest of the kids would go forward and half of them, it was, you know, Dave Gerard was mimetic theory. I mean, they were just right. mimicking right. others and they didn't right. want to be left behind. Yeah. That's probably more what left behind means. Uh, but you know, they, <laughs> so they'd go to the altar and half the time they weren't called <laughs> to actual like full-time church ministry. Right. But we didn't use the language yeah. of kingdom. I, I remember what shifted in me. Uh, it was my, my second year in, in leading the church. And we had a young person that was getting ready to go out to Bethel. Or they were wanting to get, they were yeah, desiring yeah. to go to Bethel. Right. And I was getting ready. To, you know, we were going to send them, lay hands on them, and receive an offering for them. And the Holy Spirit whispered to me, and he said, uh, well, if you receive an offering for them, then you, you better make sure to also, if you're a kingdom, you need to receive an offering Come for on. all the kids going to the local community college. Dude, I love it. <laughs> because I love it. because I love if, it. if you don't have the same desire, yeah. Uh, them that that's not kingdom that's still church and i mean it stopped me in my tracks come on because man. come on you know we, we've been having this church mentality for so long yeah, yeah. that a lot of times we don't know uh, we don't even know what kingdom thinking and looking looks like so you know when i say works 
You know, no, normally people are are automatically just thinking like, what you got to do to get saved, yeah. or you know, what you got to all of a sudden you got to pray more, you got to go to the go to church more, got to read your Bible more. And I'm like, that's not it at all. No. I mean, it's what he preordained it, for us. And it's also not that you have to preach to your neighbor more, at least in the way <laughs> that we've been trained, right? Because so, the, first of all, the, the, to your story, I was that kid. Like, right, oh, we just I just told you, I finished Bible college, I couldn't make that suit fit. Because the, right. the the only the only options I had was to this was a missional focused college, so missions was elevated to the highest. Oh yeah, and back then it meant you had to eat bugs and live in Africa. And I, I hang out with I, I felt called to North America. <laughs> my, my wife would say, "Amen." None of that. <laughs> my wife felt called to Africa. So, That's hilarious. Yeah, yeah, so, but but. but uh, but no, there weren't a lot of options, you know, it was, you had to be a missionary or a pastor. And if, and if you couldn't be one of those two elite things, then maybe you could be a, a children's minister or a, a, cause there's a higher, yeah, there's, on, yeah, there's a bit of a hierarchy in that, in that model That's as true. well. Um, and I couldn't make that suit fit. You know, I, I was called to be Bono. Right. So, you know, I once started a band, but, right. <laughs> but I had to live under the pressure of what minister, man, I can't tell you how many services I sat in where I would get so pissed <laughs> when we start talking about who's called to the ministry because it was my whole life and I, yep. I and in the last 10 years i've had the ability to do that from pulpits and be able to invite yep. everybody into the ministry because yeah. the reality is is you, you got a ministry to your family come on you've got a ministry to yourself come like on. this is the invitation well and our ministry is reconciliation and the ministry is <laughs> yeah, reconciliation yeah. so <laughs> it's yeah so it's a greater love that lays your life down for the person next to you and this is the part where you know, where I'm, I bang the drum because, because works is, is, um, light doesn't have to do push ups to be light. Come on. You know, love doesn't have to do push ups to be love. My, my, my joy today is that if I wake up and, and I, and, and I have this prayer that's become more part of my DNA, it's Father, show me who you are. Show yeah. me how you see me. Yeah. And I, I rest in both those places. Yeah. All right. Now let's go take on the day. I'll show me how you see. Jamie, show me how you yep. see this this person, and and now I'm not I'm not straining because there's right there's Jesus only did what he saw the Father doing, but he did it from union, so it was the yep. thing he wanted to do, right? Well, and I think it's the I just was just spoke at a conference in West Virginia here this last week. I kicked it off the first night, and then and, and uh, hey, am I standing camera? You keep yeah, an eye yeah, on no, me. I, yeah, we're, right. we're doing good. I think so, <laughs> but uh, I, I, I was I'm counting on you. I was, hey, man, you because uh, no, I keep looking here? there because no, <laughs> normally when we're doing we this, this. Or we're looking at each other. The, <laughs> I get the camera <laughs> underneath. I know. I'm but, sorry, everybody. We're, we're looking at each other. It's good, man. We're, yeah, we're having it's fun. a good conversation. Yeah. Go on. I was talking when you know Moses said, "Show me your glory," and and, and God said can't see my glory to see my goodness come on but but then yeah. he put moses in a rock and he yeah. put his hand over him. yeah and and really the main part of my message was the purpose for the hand of god which according to peter he's talking to young men and he tells them to submit to their elders their presbyteros uh, and then he says so humble yourself under the mighty hand of god so it's a picture of fivefold ministry or, or presbyteros or mature elders and so the purpose though of ministry gifts is to constantly be teaching people who they are in the rock. So when the ministry gifts get out of the way, all they see is goodness, but then they have to see it for themselves. Yeah. So we can tell people objectively who they are all day long. Yeah. I mean, I can tell you, man, you're loved of God. You're a child of God. You're a son of God. Uh, I mean, I can quote a thousand verses to people and they're like, yes, yes, this is great. But then when I step out of the way, yeah, They've got to experience them for themselves. That's it. That's it. Because if they don't, uh, that 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 truth takes hold when it becomes true to you, yeah. not just true of you. I, I use a simple example. I mean, imagine you live your life in poverty, and at seventy, you know you 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 live your life in poverty, and you were to told your whole life you were an orphan. Right. You're raised in the system. Uh, your whole life, uh, you know, maybe you, maybe you got molested, maybe you got, I mean, you got abused. And yeah. so you've been in and out of jail. You've struggled with addictions mm -hmm. because most of it's, it's not nature, it's nurture. Yeah. Uh, you know, right. I, I right. know we right. want, right. we want to nature all that mess in people, but normally it's nurture. Yeah. And at 70, someone informs you that you're not an orphan, right? that you've always had a father who, by the way, has been seeking for you. Yeah. And not only that, but he's got enough wealth. Yeah. 
I mean, his riches that yeah. he's pr- pr- to take care of you and your children, your children's children. And you've had millions of dollars in the bank. You've had a wealthy father, but you never knew it. And so you live your whole life. Something was true of you yeah. that never became true to you. Yeah. And so you live alienated. You live separated. Of course, we know that's all in our mind, but you didn't know it. I use the example of the Emancipation Proclamation. Yeah. You know, I mean, Lincoln gets up and he makes a declaration from Washington that slavery is now illegal. In other words, there's no more slavery. Right. Doesn't mean that people aren't experiencing slavery or right. racism. Correct. Right. I mean, objectively, slavery now right. was yeah. done away with. I yeah. mean, when Jesus said it is finished, yeah. you know, all of our slavery to sin, all of our slavery to our to our old ideas and messes was dealt with at that time. Right. But yet, when I did a study on it, people stayed slaves, some up to 40 years later. Right. And they found out three main reasons why. Number one, nobody told them. Right. Yeah. I mean, so yeah, they got no. They stayed a slave because yeah. nobody knew that they were no longer a slave. Right. The second one is the masters that were over the slaves kept them from hearing. The God of this world is blind to the minds of men. Right. Okay, uh, whoever you think that is or what that is, I believe it's the law of the devil. I mean, whatever. Uh, and, and, uh, that's not the point. I don't want to. I don't want to go down that. That's another track. podcast. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, but then the third one was the slaves had been slaves so long they heard the good news. Yeah, through their lens, but they couldn't believe it. Yeah. Because all, all they knew was slavery. And so they stayed slaves. I mean, yeah. to me, probably one of the most powerful verses in the New Testament or, or passages is, you know, um, when when Peter's up on the rooftop and God opens up. I mean, yeah. we're, we're North Carolina, so it was North Carolina barbecue. I mean, when yeah, I'm in Texas, right, that's right, right. Texas barbecue. That's right. Yeah. Uh, but but it, it, he rolls out some North Carolina. We're on rethink a guy with tacos. So yeah, yeah. Tacos. Yeah, or some good barbacoa. Yeah, yeah, barbacoa. I mean, you know, I mean, yeah, he, he, he just brought out some good, good barbecue and rolled it out of the sky. And Come Peter's on. like, man, I've never eaten that stuff. And God said, well, listen, don't call anything unclean yeah. that I've made clean. Yeah. But then Peter interprets that. Later on in the same patch or, uh, passage, when he's invited to Cornelius's house, that he's to call no man unclean. Come on. Don't call any human un- I mean, the significance of that verse, Dude. I mean, if people would actually meditate on it a little bit, I mean, I mean, literally Peter said, God told me to have to call any human yeah. unclean. So, but then the struggle is this, but have you met my neighbor? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, my neighbor's the most unclean dude on the planet. I mean, he's, he acts crazy. He looks crazy. So God, if you, and it's always that neighbor, if you met my neighbor, yeah, it's true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Never, never me. But, but it's one of those things like, but wait a minute. If, if God, if, if God tells us to not view any human as yeah. unclean, yeah. then why do so many people live unclean? Yeah. It's because no one told them they were clean. No one, no one, yeah. no one, no one showed them they were unclean. So they think they're unclean. And as a man thinks, so is he. And and it's not until the announcement and you experience it. It's the same thing with, and of course, I mean, you know, I mean, all of us have been criticized somewhat on this journey for this. Sure, sure. Yeah. The idea that, you know, I've been, I've been telling congregations for 10 years, you know, when'd you get born again? Right. You know, and I mean, people are like, well, I got born again in 1972. I got born again in 2001. I'm like, but according to scripture, according to second Peter yeah, chapter yeah. one, yeah. we were born again through the resurrection. Yeah, yeah. Like, and I said, so 2000 years ago, hello, yeah. you know, but now is there an actual born again experience? Yes. That's it. Yes. yes. I mean, when, when I said yes to Jesus, something changed yeah. in my life. Yeah. And, and what, be, what was true of me became true to me, yeah. but I still had to epigenosis that. I had to come to the knowledge of the truth. I well, I I, I use I like to use the example of, you know, you got Isaiah chapter six or Isaiah chapter one through five. Isaiah's message is whoa, 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 you know, because he's prophesying from the earth. He's like, man, this earth is whoa, whoa, whoa. There, right. the earth's a mess and everything right. else. All of a sudden, in chapter six, he gets caught up into the heavens, yeah. and the angels around the throne are constantly saying, "Holy, holy, holy! The earth is full of glory." Mm-hmm. It's like, wait a minute, so, how could it be full of woes? It's where you're, it's what you're looking through. Come on. Well, and, you're and, at. That, correct. Yeah. And, and, and the perspective, the perspective is from the earth, you're going to be a prophet of woe. You sit around and watch Fox News and, sure. and MSNBC and, and CNN, you're going to be a prophet of woe. Yeah. But then, uh, you know, they said the earth is full of glory. So how come we're not seeing more manifestations of glory? Yeah. It's because the prophet said the earth shall be filled, yeah. not with the glory of the Lord, but with the knowledge of the glory. It's it's the same yeah. Septuagint. It would be epigenosis. Yeah, yeah. So until we become aware of that glory, yeah. it doesn't transform us. So if then the light w- within you is dark. Uh, so it's the, where the eye is healthy, the body's full of light. Where the eye is unhealthy, the body's full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? Come on. For me, uh, there's a few things here. Where is the light? 
It's within you. Come on. Like it, the yeah. light of all men, John. Light. Light. It's yeah. within, so we're not having a conversation about separation. And he's but, the father of lights. And he's the father of lights. <laughs> Come on. So, so in the context of separation where I was raised, where somehow we got to get the light in us, even Correct. in this moment. Correct. No, no. Where is the light? It's still in you. So Come what's on. going on? Well, your lens is fractured. And so you're perceiving. And, and this is how great is that Come darkness? On. Well, that's what you're talking about. But yep. to me, that's that's um, that's where this this the, 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 the teaching of union is an invitation to say there's no separation in the nature Come of God. On. There's Come no on. separation in the nature of love. The light is within you. You're awakening to it. And it, now it, it's about clearing your lens. Right. Well, anyone who turns to Christ, the yeah. veil is removed. Yeah. Well, when a veil is removed, yeah. something doesn't show up that wasn't there. It was always there. Right. I mean, right. the mystery hidden from the ages. Yeah. It's not Christ to you. It's yeah. Christ in you. That's it. And, and, and again, that's where, I mean, and I've been saying this for 20 years. Yeah. Of course, of course, got a lot of attack for it too. Yeah. But, you know, our job is not to preach to the sin in people, but the sun in people. Come on, man. You know, it, it's to call the sun out of them. But even in the midst of all that, I can tell you all day long yeah. that Christ in you is the hope of glory. But until you experience that glory for yourself, yeah. and, 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 I, and, and I love, I heard, I think it was Peter Hyatt. He, he made this statement. He said, oh, and, 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 and I love this statement. He said, like, no one believes in hell. He said, he said, Listen to me again. He yeah. said, "It." I didn't say no one believes there is not a hell, but no one believes yeah, yeah, in hell, yeah. which is what makes it hell. Yeah. Because you're not believing. So you're, and of course the word hell comes from a word that means to, to veil or to cover. So anytime you're in darkness, yeah. you're not believing. Yeah. And of course, so you're in hell, you're in a place of darkness, yeah. uh, but yet light is still in you. And, and that light wants to come flying out of you. And that light wants to be yeah. revealed in you. Yeah, yeah. And again, I mean, I think, I think so much of the, the language that we use, I mean, the whole Christian walk is really about me experiencing subjectively by faith yeah. what is true objectively already of me. Yeah. And and that's to me, that's the working out of our salvation, not working it in, not working for it. We're working it out. Yeah. Uh, and, 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 and we're working it out with fear and trembling, which doesn't mean, I mean, it's one of the myths in my book is not being all afraid. Right. Fear yeah. and trembling was just literally a euphemism that yeah, yeah. meant like not in your own flesh. And I, you know, Paul said, I, 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 I came to you in power, not in fear yeah, and trembling. Yeah. Right. In other words, we're relying completely on him. We're not sitting there terrified. We're going to lose our salvation. Right, right. That's yeah. not the point yeah. of it. But, but that's where, when we go back to. And, and I, I want to I want to just throw a few verses out there. I, think it, people I was going to say that'll preach, but I'm pretty sure that that's what. You yeah. Well, but I, I, well, like few examples, all right? Hebrews tells us, Hebrews 9, that we have been, past tense, perfected forever. Yeah. Past tense. Objective truth. Uh, you know, objective truths are grace truths. It is what's true of us outside of our will, outside of our choice. Uh, what God did, what God did, uh, I mean, what Adam did affected all of humanity sure. outside of the will, outside of the choice. Sure. So now what Jesus did in the undoing of Adam and the reversing of that was outside of our will. Cause everybody always wants to say, well, but God, God would never force anything on you. He gives you free will. And I'm like, I have a little different view of free will. You know, I think only two humans ever had free will. Okay. Jesus and Adam. Okay. Okay. Because everyone else is included in one of them. All right. Before the cross, everyone, Adam was one man with a many membered body. Right After the cross, Jesus is one man with a many membered body. Yeah. They were the only two humans on the planet that were given true free will, but their will affected everyone else's will outside of their will and outside of the choice. Now, do we have free choice? Yes. Okay. We have choice, but real, I mean, think of how many things we don't have free will in. Right. We don't, we don't have free will in what country you're born in, what family you were born in. I mean, I mean, for, for someone to have true free will, I mean, it doesn't exist. <laughs> you, follow on you. you know what I mean? I mean, if we think of it. And so, but I mean, people get so caught up in the free will, like God would never go against like, like your will. And I mean, I read something the other day where, you know, someone said, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, when it comes to our relationship with God is, is like a wedding. We're the bride. Right. Uh, Jesus is, is the bridegroom. And, and like, you know, God wouldn't force you to, to marry. And I'm like, you ever study biblical marriage? The bride never had a choice. I mean, the, the, the choice was given. It, it was the parents that right. the bride trusted. Right. That actually said, this is who you're going to marry. I yeah. mean, there wasn't like, I don't like him. I, I mean, literally biblical marriage was. <laughs> so nice. Hey guys, interrupting for a second. Glad you're here. 
so thankful for this podcast, thankful to get to do this with friends, thankful for Derek and all of those who've navigated it with us. Listen, this podcast is done under our nonprofit, A Family Story. 12 years ago, I had a vision and I wrote it down. I'm going to read it to you. Family Story is a relational community of creatives, family and friends. I see all of us as creatives. We do life together. We envision and express God's love through our gifting and grace. We are worshipers, dreamers, storytellers, and preachers, a family of dads and moms, brothers and sisters, daughters and sons, united by a passion to know and reveal God's perfect love. I feel like I'm seeing the fulfillment of some of that vision 12 years ago. The mandate on A Family Story was to create media content catalytic for an encounter with the love of God. AFamilyStory.org is our website. I encourage you to go there. There's a whole lot of media content there. There's books and articles. Uh, there's films, some music, and uh, this podcast. That's the home of Rethinking God with Tacos, which is pretty dang cool. It's been life-giving, as I said, the community around it, the community of creatives, of family and friends that's growing. Uh, it's blown me away. And so I'm thankful. I'm thankful uh, for all the relationships, connections, and I'm thankful for all those who've given. Rethinking God with Tacos is listener-supported. If you'd like to support us, you can go to familystory.org. Uh, again, we're a nonprofit. And I would encourage you to join us on our Facebook group, uh, follow us on Instagram, all the socials. Uh, if you're curious how to find me on the socials, it's at Jason Clark is otherwise like share, uh, write a review on iTunes or Spotify. Uh, tell your mom, we really are loving doing this and I'm so thankful for everyone here. All right. It's time to get back to the podcast. So let, so, but so we can articulate cause yeah. For the guy who wrote God is not in control. Right. I need a little bit of help here. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah, which by the way, I absolutely agree. Yeah, I know, I know. Right. But what I was running at is is that consent, there that love will never step outside of consent. But I'm talking about the inner workings on, and the relational dynamic. Correct. You're having a conversation that's not that's not about about um the invitation to intimacy. Correct. You're having a, so I just, well, and, and again, objective truth. Well, let, let me yeah, let me uh, do it, man. Yeah, yeah. Let, me, let me yeah, let me just actually read. Uh, objective truth means unbiased assessment. It has nothing to do with feelings or personal views, but facts. Objective yeah. truth means it is true for all people of all cultures, all times and ages, even if they don't know it or recognize it to be true. Yeah. Subjective is describes a personal experience or viewpoint. I, I, I love uh Cognitive scientists have come up with this term, like in the last 20 or 30 years, called qualia. And so uh, qualia is the tasting of the apple. I mean, you know, I, I can I can tell someone about an apple all day oh, long, yeah, yeah. but it's not till you taste the apple. Yeah. You know, I, I'm a drummer. Yeah. All right. So we live in a YouTube generation that yeah. you can literally go on YouTube. And you can you can become an expert in drums, right? I mean, you you can tell people what's the best wood, what's the best heads, uh, what what's the best symbols for the style of music you want to play. Right. But until you pick up a pair of sticks, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you sit down to the drum set, right. you don't know a jack about drumming, right? All right? And, and you so, still don't when you first sit down. Well, hello, at least we're doing it. <laughs> but that's the, that's the thing about this is <laughs> it's experience. You're, yes, come on, is that we can we can know all these objective truths and yeah. and ob objectively, outside of our will and outside yeah. of our choice, what Jesus did. Objectively was for all of humanity. I love it, man. But now, subjectively, salvation, uh, that's why I, I tell people, I said, I probably, I would probably call myself more of a universal reconciliationist because yeah. I believe everybody was reconciled to the cross, which means brought into favor. Yeah. But I think the cross is universal in nature. Correct. Yes. But like, but salvation, sozo, wholeness, completeness, yeah. healing, deliverance, yeah. none of that we need in heaven. Right. That's all stuff we need right now. Yeah, that's right. You know, yeah. and I think for so long we've been so, especially the Protestant church got so focused on the sweet by and by. We don't know how to teach people how to live in the nasty now and now. Right. And the reality is people are like, listen, that's great, yeah. but that's not my reality. Yeah. And so the language for me, that's really, it's not only helped me. I've had so many people come up to me and say, oh my gosh, yeah. you know, the, the, the true of me and true to me, that makes so much sense because objectively this is true of me. All right. Another great example. All right. Paul gets up on Mars Hill. Yeah. And he tells a bunch of pagan Athenians, you're in him. 
in him you live and move and have your being because we're all God's offspring. That's right. We all come from one blood. And then he writes a letter and he says, greet Adronicus and Junia for they were in Christ before I was. <laughs> I know, man. It's like You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's like, wait, wait a minute. Are you confused, yeah. Paul? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you just yeah. told a bunch of pagans that don't even believe in God that they're all in Christ. But yet now you said these couple were in Christ for you. I believe what Paul was, was saying is, is he was saying objectively, we're all in him. Yeah. And, and, and whether you know it, believe it right. or not, that, right. that, that's a done deal because yeah. it's by grace yeah. and what God did God for us and has the world to himself. Come on. Yeah. That's it. But, but that Adronicus and Junia experienced. Yes. That's it. That's what it. it meant to be live. Yeah. This, well, a, a perfect example is Hebrews chapter four. Okay. Hebrews four, uh, it's talking about rest and it says, though the works were finished. Yeah. Because they did not mix it with faith, it profited them nothing. Yeah. And we're not saved by grace alone, by objective truth. We're saved by grace through faith. Right. I mean, I mean, think of I, this. You know, we're, we're, we're never told, uh, we're never told to examine ourselves to see if we be in grace. Never said examine yourself to see if you be in Christ. Right. Said examine yourself to see if you be in faith. Right. Trust, confidence. Of course, the beautiful thing is he gives us the faith. Say, <laughs> and, and, it's, and it's his faith. I mean, it's fixed. Yeah, it's, I mean, that's the beautiful part about it. It's not, it's not yeah. a work of mine. Yeah. I just trust it. So there's a phrase. Because because the question then is how. So yeah. th this is this is a, a phrase that we uh, first of all love is the long game is one of the things that that we we're, we're in a long game right come on uh, this is the phrase be, that we've embraced that is a, to me is a is a faith phrase I don't know but God is good and obviously God is good <laughs> as, as Jesus defines yeah I don't know but God is good has allowed has empowered me to live like I'm not going to be moved from his goodness I'm not doing mental gymnastics no. around his goodness I'm not going to let Never. the preacher tell me God is good but also the father looked away like that's Correct. not good Come on. which one is it is he good or is he not and he's always if good. God is good only as, good only good yes. as Jesus defined and Jesus defined it as a greater love that lays his life down for his friends he brought everything down to everything is love and then he went to a cross and he called us all friends so yep. it's that good it's and it's an Come objective on. good not a subjective like that taco Correct. it didn't taste great it's a, it's an right. objective good if God as good as Jesus defined, then you can live in the I don't know, but he's good. And what I've discovered in my life is now you're living in the it's now, but not yet. My experience is incongruent with what is true. Correct. I don't know, but God is good. That's the faith that I get to embrace that actually brings me into encounter after encounter after encounter. Well, and, and, and what did Paul tell us in Romans? Faith comes by hearing. Yeah. And hearing, not by the word. Hearing and knowing that what you, because the lens is, I've heard, but I'm not hearing through the lens of separation. I'm not going to participate in that Correct. anymore. Well, gonna... well, but that's why the important part, it's not by hearing the word, it's by hearing a word. Come on. It's wow. hearing a rhema, yes. right? not, not logos. Yeah. So it's, it's literally hearing like God speak personally to us. So Come that's on. an encounter. That's it. You know, again, you, 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 if, if most people go to church and the hand is over the rock. And constantly telling them what they're not. Yeah, that's right. right. And then the hand never gets out of the way because they're the covering that becomes the smothering. Yeah. Okay. When the only purpose well, for you me, have to go through them now to get to. It's exactly yeah. it. So the, the purpose for the, the ministry gifts is to tell you who you are. Right. Constantly remind you, really preaching objective truth. But yeah. then, then when we get out of the way. Yeah. You still have to see it for yourself. You have to encounter. It, it, it's the example of, I mean, my children. My children can't live on yeah. my faith, my experience. Yeah. They have to experience God for themselves. Right. And and I think that's a, I, I think it's where a lot of, again, and I mean, I, you know, I travel a lot. Right. All right. Yeah. And I go into a lot of different streams and circles. And <clears throat> at times I will tailor a lot of things I study according to a lot of the questions I get asked. Because I, I want to be relevant to answer questions people are actually asking. Right. I mean, let's be honest. Right, right. A lot yeah. of us preachers, we're answering stuff nobody's asking. Nobody's asking I mean, yeah. It's like, man, if nobody even cares, why, <laughs> why are you so consumed with that subject when nobody's asking that question? But you they know, should be. Right. They should be asking it. <laughs> but, but, but that's where, you know, I mean, you know, a, a, another good example is, you know, I mean, Paul tells us in Thessalonians that our whole spirit, soul, and body has been past tense, completely yeah. sanctified. I mean, it's finished. It's a done work. But yeah. then, but then we're we're told to work out our salvation. We're told to, you know, there, there, there's this, there's still this 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 side of it. Now again, but it's, it's a like, relational journey, right? I'm sorry, I interrupted. Well, but again, but that's what encounter is. That's what, that's all it is. <laughs> it's oh, I'm in a relationship. <laughs> right. So it's not working. It is. It's it's becoming sure in love. Right. It's growing confident in his affection. It's discovering what. But but, but but let's be honest. All right. A lot of people. And there may be a lot of people that watch this. Yeah. The knowledge, 
that they're learning is lighting them up and they're excited. Yeah. But but you can ever be learning yeah. and still not come because yeah. God's desire is not that just we get saved. Yeah. He said, God's desire is that all men be sozoed and come to the knowledge of the truth. And so, you know, that means you can be genuinely saved and actually well, never come to the knowledge of the truth. It's the Emmaus road without the breaking of the bread. And if you do, if you don't actually get the revelation, the encounter and the, oh, the resurrected Christ is in the room. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's just a good message on a road that puffs up. If those guys That's hadn't good. gone in the house, they could have built an itinerant ministry on what they learned on the road. But it got sideways because knowledge puffs up. It's, and we live in an enlightened <laughs> an enlightened age that has elevated knowledge. Like, this Big is time. Western enlightenment where we take, to, and I'm not even knocking the system. It's a good system. Yeah. But we take class Classes and and you pass tests and those tests tell you if you passed or not by getting the right answer, and in the very nature of how we how we learn in this culture, uh, elevates knowledge above encounter and experience. It's the thing that we're constantly us relational guys, us relational yeah. guys are constantly yeah. saying, hey, it's got to be, it's got to be practical theology. It has to work. It has to transform. It has to impact your kids and your marriage and your family and how Come on. that's Come the on. stuff. And for me, well, man, it, it, it's, it's the Emmaus road. You got to get yeah. in the, ho in the yeah. house, get the revelation. Cause, cause by the way, to answer the question, what happens after they get, didn't our hearts burn? He's, he's engaged with our heads, hearts, every part of on, on the Emmaus road. Yeah. But now we got the revelation always there, but now we see it. And what did they do? They did something. But they didn't go back. They went back to Jerusalem. They had some reason to be in Emmaus, but for some, right. up back to Jerusalem. But they yeah. didn't go back with some um, some knowledge. Right. They went back with the revelation of the living Christ. And when they did, they opened up the door, started talking, and everyone else got an encounter. Come on. Well, it, that's the do. It's, 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 it's not a hard do. Right. Right. Well, I, I said something this last week, and and I'm sure people have heard it said. It it like dawned on me for the first time. Yeah. It was like because I was meditating on light. And the thing that hit me is that light doesn't have a voice. Light removes darkness by just being light. That's it. And so it's about what we do, not just what we say. Yeah. All right. And so yeah. I mean, we can say it all day long. Yeah. We can preach it all day long. But it, it, the only way darkness is removed is when we actually just be light. Yeah. And, and that's in the walking out of what God has done in us come on. and now working its way out of us, which again is thy kingdom come on my earth yeah. as it is in heaven and heaven is on the inside of me. <laughs> so it, yeah, it's an outworking <laughs> from the inside out yeah. that then begins to manifest in the world around me. Yeah. But, but that's still, that's, it's still an action. You know what I mean? It's, 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 it's a being, yeah. it's, it's an overflow, it's a light. Uh, and so I, I, I've, I've just, I've just, again, I've, I've been finding, especially lately, so many people, sometimes just a little verbiage tweak, Yeah. like, okay, this is true of you, but it's not only just true of you. It's true of your neighbor that, that still acting crazy. Right. All right. I mean, because yeah. you are your brother's keeper. It's, I mean, that, that guy that is your enemy, that Democrat that you don't like Republican or that Republican you don't like Democrat, mm -hmm. guess what? Right. I mean, that's, that's true of him also. Yeah. Okay. You that's know, right. Because it's an election year. Help us, Jesus. Yeah. You know, but I mean, it, 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 it's true. It's, it's true of that complete uh, pagan and witchcraft as much as it is yeah. that, that Christian that goes to church five times a week and yeah. thinks that everything they're doing is earning their salvation. But yeah. at the same time, uh, it's true of them, but it doesn't mean it's become true to true. them. Yeah. That's when it becomes revelation to you. That's when it becomes light to you. I mean, I give the example. I preached about the love of God for years. Yeah. Absolutely didn't understand it at all. Yeah. I yeah. mean, it wasn't until a dozen years ago that I didn't encounter with the love of God that completely changed Come on. my whole life. Yeah. It changed yeah. uh, my family's life. It yeah. changed how I viewed scripture. Yeah. Because before, man, I mean, listen, my, my first probably 10, 15 years of preaching, man, I mean, I would have been amen and Mark Driscoll all the time. Right. Oh, well, right. yeah, man. I don't, I don't, I don't serve, I don't serve that pussy Jesus that right, just loves right. all yeah. the time. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I like that Jesus goes in and kicks some butt in the temple and turns him over because, yeah. you know, got to be a man's man. And yeah. then I have an encounter with the love of God. You'd been calling me a hippie. Yeah. yeah. Listen, man, totally. And boy, them, them greasy grace people. Yeah, 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 yeah. Those sloppy again. Oh, yeah, yeah. Everything just love, love, love. I mean, literally, <laughs> I mean, there was a season in my life. Man, I'm like, love laid his life down. <laughs> I know, bro. I mean, love is. Well, but again, the crazy thing is, I'd studied all that. I know, yeah. I knew yeah, all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. But I didn't. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know all. I know, that. I know. It, I it's know. not yeah. once I had that encounter. Yeah. But it also gives me incredible grace for people yeah. that when they're still angry, yeah. their God's angry, and they're 
acting out like that. I just know they've not experienced that yet. Yeah. You know, I mean, I use a perfect example. Okay. We, we start landing this plane here, but uh, <laughs> I, I have two children. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We got to talk tacos before we. Talk. Yeah, absolutely. Now my, 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 my daughter, yeah. uh, my daughter for most American evangelicals yeah. uh, would be a complete enigma. Okay. Because she was in full conversation at a year old. I mean, she was like always five years older than everybody else. Um, but at 28 months, she had a prayer language. She was praying in tongues. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. And she never invited Jesus into her heart. Yeah. And she never prayed the sinner's prayer. Yeah. Okay. Which that alone yeah. just messes with people. Sure. Sure. You know? sure. I mean, yeah. even though John was full of the Holy Spirit in the womb, but, you know, we have some scripture. Right, 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 right. Yeah. 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 Um, and at three and four, she was having encounters with God. I mean, yeah. we walked in the house one day and my mom had been sick for like a month. We'd been on the road for like a month and a half. My mom had been sick. Doctors couldn't figure out what's wrong with her. My wife and I walk in, sit down in the love seat. I am, and Brittany comes in, she's three and a half years old. She stops. She says, hi to grandma. She stops. She points up in the corner. She says, you get out of here right now and you leave my grandma alone. And we're like, what the heck is going on? And, and I, we said, Brittany, what are you seeing? She said, daddy, you don't see that ugly little thing in the corner, Scott, like hissing at grandma. We're, we didn't see nothing. Right. You know, I'm a yeah. fan, man of faith. And power. Right, 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 right. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> and so, I mean, for her, I, I remember she was a year old. My wife was pregnant with our son and we were sitting with our spiritual mom, Dr. Fuchsia Pickett, and Mama Pickett was probably one of the greatest teachers of the 20th century. Right. Wrote over 20 books. Brilliant, incredible woman of God. And I remember this was 1995. We're sitting at a restaurant in Michigan, and she said, you know, son, right now everybody's preaching about the Joshua generation. This was the 90s. There's going to be this generation of all these addicts that are going to get radically saved, are going to change the world. And she said, but I don't know why no one ever talks about what Isaiah talked about, that there would be children born in Zion. Hmm. She said there would be children born in yeah. union yeah. that would never need to go out into the world. And yeah. she looked at my wife and I, and she pointed out, our daughter was sitting in the high yeah, chair, yeah, yeah, yeah. and she said she's one of them. Yeah. And so she never, never gone out and tasted anything else. Yeah. I mean, all she's known is relationship with God because he was always there. Yeah. Now, our son was then born. Our son was raised the same way. Yeah. Our son didn't have those encounters. Right. He was in the same services. I mean, my kids were at 250 times a year at church with me. Okay. I mean, yeah, yeah. traveling around the country. I did a lot I mean, of church. Listen, by the there. time they were 16, we figured out one time, if they'd have been normal, like just preacher's kids, did Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, they did 60 years of church in the first right. 16 years. <laughs> the fact that they want anything to do with God, right. let alone, <laughs> let alone, they still, they still attend the local yeah. cities. It's just beyond me. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, they, but and that's all the good, the bad, and the ugly. Yeah. My son, he was busy playing on the phone when all these people were having encounters. He didn't experience the same thing. So at, at 16, he gets diagnosed with type 1 diabetes, and it throws him into, a, I mean, a 10 years of, of fear and death. Yeah. And, I mean, he was told by the doctor he'd be dead by the time you're 30 if you don't do this. And literally, he believed that lie. Wow. And then he got mad at God because finally we were starting a church. He was home all the time. He had a band and he's finally with his friends. He wasn't traveling all over. And right, he's like, right. really, God, right. I've been traveling the first 16 years of my life. Right. Now I'm home and I got to give myself four shots a day. I mean, I could die tomorrow. I mean, yeah, he just really got angry at God. He got mad at me. He got mad at everybody. Yeah. And then we lived for at least eight years with an addict. And I mean, it was, it was, it was a rough season, boy, yeah. boy cost me thousands of dollars, man. And yeah. all my friends would tell me, you got to do tough love and kick him out of the house. And the Holy spirit wouldn't let me do it. Yeah. And I remember, I remember the father whispered to me one day, he said, you're experiencing right now with your son, what I experience with all my sons and daughters yeah. who don't listen to anything I say, yeah. who, who flip me off and spit at me. And I yeah. still love him. Yeah, that's right. And he's like, I'm, I'm, I'm showing you something right now. Well, all of a sudden here, about three years ago now, he was about 25 and I get a phone call. It's like midnight. And it was my son. I said, hey, son, what's going on? He's like, dad, this, this stuff's real. Of course, he didn't, he didn't use the word stuff. Yeah, yeah. You know, and of course, I answered back. <laughs> I said, no stuff, you know. And and I just <laughs> don't want to offend anybody. But listen, I know you, the taco folks probably wouldn't mind. But <laughs> anybody else that might see it on YouTube or her, her GAN or wherever, I'll, I'll behave myself. And I was like, well, son, what just happened? He said, dad, he said, I woke up feeling like I was being choked. Mm. And he said, uh, uh, you know, and he was living at that time with his girlfriend, who's now his wife. Uh, and she's always been incredibly, incredibly prophetic. Yeah. And she's like, is it a panic attack? He said, no, I've had those before. This isn't it. And then he kind of remembered, though, I mean, a, a, uh, a sermon I preached when he was like 
12 on the spirit of divination that followed Paul around the little girl. You know, the, these are men of the most high God and he rebukes it. And it's, it's pythos is the Greek word for divination, okay. which is where we get python from. Okay. And like witch, yeah, witchcraft, yeah. it like, it, it chokes you. It doesn't bite right. you. It, it right. destroys you. And so he said, pray against that. Well, she like cast a couple of demons out of him. Now, regardless of what anybody thinks about demons and all that, that's, I don't even care about getting in that discussion. All I know is he had an encounter with the spirit world yeah. that literally shook him to his core yeah. that he's like, okay, this isn't just stuff in the Bible. This isn't just stories. I just experienced this. All right. And because he had that experience within a week, there was no more drugs. Yeah. There was no more vaping. Yeah. There was no more like bad habits that were costing him money that he didn't have. Right. Okay. Uh, I mean, and nobody said, now you got to stop doing this. You got to stop doing that. Right. Right. And he calls my wife on that week later and he said, next Sunday afternoon, uh, you and dad need to, need to, uh, do a, uh, FaceTime with us because grandpa is marrying us because we shouldn't be living together. Come on. I mean, I mean yeah. all, all of a sudden his house turns into deliverance central. Yeah. All right. I mean, all their friends, they were getting stoned with, they yeah. were having issues. They're over there. He's calling me like at 10 o'clock at night. Hey, dad, would you pray with us? Uh, you know, uh, one of the cousins is over here and, uh, you know, and he turns the phone and the person's eyes are black as night. They're right, right. doing all this. Yeah. And he's, and he's like, what do we do? And I'm like, you listen, do this and praying with him. All of a sudden he's dropping DoorDash off to people and God's giving him words of knowledge and people are getting healed all right. over. He turned into Paul White all of a sudden, <laughs> you know, and I'm just like, what happened to this kid, yeah, you know, yeah. but all it took was one encounter. Yeah, that's it. And, and then his wife, she tells me all the time, she said, I'm blown away by what Brandon knows. Yeah. She's right, like, sure. Because she's, he was raised. I said, all well, those... it's called incorruptible seed. I mean, yeah. he said yeah, yeah, 250 yeah. Yeah, yeah. a year and he was hearing good news. Right? Yeah. Not much that's, knowledge. that's why knowledge is important. Because it's, yeah, he'll, he'll use it later. Correct. Yeah. Well, Cause it got in him. Yeah. What it took, that was incorruptible seed, but it took some rain. Yeah. All it took was a little rain to drop on it. And all of a sudden, all this stuff is coming out of him. And I mean, he's completely a different young man than he was. Now, he's the Brandon we always knew that he was. Yeah, yeah, sure. sure. But he was living a lie. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And, but objectively, none of the, nothing changed. We we still kept declaring who he was. Sure. You know, the, yeah. this is a son in who we are well pleased and the father's That's well pleased it. with. That's he's it. out getting stoned. Yeah. He's getting all kinds of trouble. Yeah. But God didn't seem any different. Yeah. Call no man unclean that I have called Come on. that I've called clean. But once he had that 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 epigenosis everything changed yeah because now it became real to him because he had an encounter yeah. and i'm also not saying i don't want anybody to misunderstand i'm not saying run around no, also no. looking for all kinds of crazy encounters because people get goofy with that too yeah i'm saying just walk out this incredible union with christ but also ask him to reveal those things to you yeah. i mean one of the things i do like uh, the e-courses that i have on my um, on my website uh, especially like i've one on hell and i've one on the last days okay and and when i teach those things i said all of these that i'm teaching you are possibilities none of these are certainties but when we get all done which one should you believe yeah ask the Holy Spirit that's on the inside of you. Because guess who leads you into all truth? I don't lead you into all truth. Yeah. The Bible doesn't even lead you into all truth. The Spirit leads you into all truth. He's the one that will, will, will reveal truth to you. But until it's revealed, it's true of you. Yeah. But not necessarily true to you, right. and so I, mean, I, I, and I pray everybody hears that. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm not talking about a work. I'm not talking no, no, about. No, no, no. I, I mean, it, yeah. it's this, it's, it's that, it's that mixing of grace and faith that are two sides of the same coin. You know, it's uh, my my friend uh, Lynn Howell says this all the time. He said, when Christ is at the center, and you keep Him at the center, anytime you go f too far to the right or too far to the left, you run into a thief. So you can go too far just with objective truth and grace. And if you never te teach the subjective side, you have all kinds of people walking around uh, having somewhat of a knowledge of who they are, but don't know how to walk it out. Yeah. You know, and if you don't know how to walk yeah. it out, yeah. uh, then, I mean, it, again, it's no profit to you if you don't mix it with faith. Yeah. And so it's grace and faith, two sides of the same coin. Yeah. But again, the beauty is, it's his faith. Yeah. He, he gives you the faith. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't have to muster it up. You That's don't right. have to try. That's but right. again, what, what are we told? We're told we're in a fight of faith. He said, examine yourself to see if you be in the faith. Uh, the whole the whole fight, if you may, of of if there's a struggle yeah. of, of, of walking this out, yeah, Paul called it a, a struggle of faith. I mean, think about this. Paul tells us that we've been made completely righteous, but then he tells Timothy, pursue righteousness. Yeah. Well, I mean, if, if I'm already righteous, right. why should I pursue 
what I already have. I mean, literally, I mean, I mean, I, I, we could spend a lot of time just going over the verses. I mean, there's right. so many of right. them that if you actually look at them, you'll be like, wait a minute, this feels like, well, like total opposites when yeah. it's not. Yeah. And what, what I, what I'm going to do now yeah. <laughs> is, is take it and, and make it, it, it's the simplest thing for me. Cause I'm a, for me, it has to be good. good all that has to get simple because when you when you start talking about okay go here too far go here and you, so we start reading yeah, verses right, and right. I'm like it, it can feel like if you're if you don't understand that neither that neither death nor life angels you know, nothing separates us correct from correct his love that that at the end of the day and this is what I'll come back to my kids I'm like man uh, where you experience love is who God is. It's it's this. It, it, I, I've been enamored, enamored with this, and I know this could you could probably preach on. It, so we don't we don't want to do that because we're going to go eat now. Right, exactly. But <laughs> but uh, I'm fascinated with the fact that Jesus can sleep in a boat in the middle of a storm. Come on. But it's because there is a relational dynamic. He actually is in the Father. Father's in him. He's. It's it's. Uh, I, I say this often. Was Jesus the most obedient person on the planet, or did he only do what was in his heart to do? And the answer is yes. And right. it's, it's the invitation to live in the ease of his love, to Come live on. in that place um, where 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 everything now is a response. Like the doing is always a response of how much you know. Absolutely. Loves. And so, I mean, that's what we're well, talking about. Again, it's it's right. It's not the it's not the action of it. Yeah. It's 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 the it's the overflow of the why. Yeah, that's it. You know, I mean, like Lily, the more I got a revelation of the love of God, and the grace of God, yeah. I don't feel like I do less. No. I actually feel like I do more. The difference is I'm not wore out. Right. You're not you're not wore out <laughs> and it impacts more. Because what you're it's the seed. It's the, you're actually now you're actually uh participating with the incorruptible seed. Come on. <laughs> that's how you're that's what you're doing. Well, and you're you're partaker of the divine part nature. Yes. You're, you're walking out theosis more yeah. because now yeah. it's 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 he and I working together. Yeah. Because we're co laborers with Christ. It's yeah. never all him and it's never all us. The yeah. truth is it's that yeah. that wonderful union of him working his will out through us and with us. Yeah. And and again, that, that that's where I constantly go back to that language. And and again, it might be it might just be language that helps people get to the next place. Yeah. You know, it, it's like uh, every, every area on in, in, in my journey, it's like, you know, I, I remember you, 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 I think I put something up on Rethink You Got With Tacos uh, Facebook. Facebook page about my journey. Yeah. About, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a little bit of this and I'm a little bit of yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> spiritual mind. Has I been on this journey where I embrace uh, yeah. some Baptist stuff or embrace some Lutheran stuff, yeah, 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 yeah. all this other stuff, but I keep going. And, and there's things I think in our walk that helps us get from, a to C. There's some that help us get from D to F. There's some ministries that in the nineties, man, I couldn't get enough of yeah. because they helped me get to the next place yeah. where I can't even yeah. listen to them anymore. Right, right, right. I mean, yeah. now it's like, oh, I'm desperate you know? for you was a love song. I sang to God that I encountered him in for years. And then he said, I don't want desperate kids. And I went, oh, that's a beautiful, one. but he met me there. Listen, as two guys who want to develop language, we could do this for three more hours. It's true. But man. we're going to go get some food now. Right. So yeah. share, uh, we got to talk tacos. All right. Um, you went uh, to Velvet Taco. To Velvet Taco. Yeah. Come here, man. Come here. Yeah. <laughs> we have a friend with us. <laughs> going, guys. I've been the awkward person. They've been. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Say your name. Over in the corner. I'm Reggie. Good to meet y'all. <laughs> We're all going to tacos, yeah. but you guys yeah. went to Velvet, Ta Velvet Tacos oh, yeah. last night. Yeah. Took him to Park Road Shopping Center. We went and saw the new Dune movie, which nice. is fantastic. It's amazing. And uh, I, if you're ever in Charlotte, go to Velvet Taco. I recommend the Chicken Tikka. <laughs> That's like a masala curry type vibe. That's a great taco. It's got on. carrots on it, and I love it. And then the buffalo chicken. And you went with the steak one, right? Yeah, yeah, man. Uh, the steak and then, yeah. then the, uh, the uh, brisket. Yeah, I love a good non-traditional taco. Mushrooms. It's fusion going. Yeah, yeah. Velvet Taco, is a, is a, that's a cool place if you're coming to Charlotte. So we're, we're actually going to go out and get burgers. So don't tell anybody I do eat other things than tacos. It's just because we want to eat on the water. Yeah. Well, there's, no, there's no taco well, place in the make water. a burger with one bun. And... <laughs> That's right. It's just an American it's taco. It's the same ingredient. It's just an American taco. How do we find you, man? How do we? Yeah. Uh, www.himconnect.net. Or just put my name. You can put Jamie Englehart in it yeah. and something will. All kinds of stuff will pop up, Instagram and Facebook and yeah, all yeah. that, and would love it. And, I mean, anybody that's on the Rethinking God with Tacos uh, Facebook page, yeah. I put stuff on there every once in a while. I mean, not, not necessarily all the time, but yeah. every once in a while. No, I love it. I'm yeah. grateful for you, man. I'm grateful for you too, the way man. you're pouring into my life and our yeah. lives. 
uh, this is this was a privilege to do it in my backyard. Yeah, this was fun. Man. Yeah, this and look, look at the gorgeous day. Right, I, the sun came while we were it's like while we, perfect. Perfect. Yeah. So love you. You too. All right, guys. Love you guys. We'll talk to you soon. Hey guys, thanks for listening to the podcast. If you'd like to learn more about the podcast, myself or our guests, you can go to afamilystory.org. You can also go to afamilystory.org if you'd like to give. This is a listener-supported podcast, and we are incredibly grateful for your generosity. Hey, we have a Facebook group, and it's pretty cool. Uh, Rethinking God with Tacos. You can join us over there. Lots of incredible conversation and community taking place on that page. And you can also follow us on all the socials, Instagram, uh, TikTok, YouTube, and others. Hey, I'd love it also if you uh, went on iTunes and left a review or shared or tweeted or liked the podcast. Uh, Let your friends know that this is a good place to hear about the love of God. I pray grace and wonder over your day.